All right. So we have Taurus Sun, Taurus Moon, and Taurus Rising. General, our weekly chart reading March 2nd to March 8, 2020 on our hands. And um, in case any of you guys is interested in a personal reading with me, you can check out the uh, description down below. And there you're going to find a link to my website from which uh, you can uh, purchase a, a reading. So that being said, moving to the spread straight away here, the first card which marks the topic of your week, Taurus, is to be the world card. Moving next, it is the char the um, energies which are, which are feeding up the situation. We have the lovers. That's uh, quite interesting. All right. So moving next, challenges uh, that you will have to overcome here. We do have the Page of Swords. And afterwards, it is the gifts and the blessings that you can enjoy throughout the week. That is to be the Seven of Cups. And now all makes sense. All right. So uh, then it is how people are looking at you. What kind of impression you are giving into people. That is to be the uh, Seven of Wands. And the last one, which is the guidance that uh, Taro is offering. Uh, that is to be the uh, Knight of Swords. So uh, it looks like that this um, week is going to be uh, one of a fantastic one, by the way. It does depend, however, how one takes on their uh, on their environment. But to me, if these cards were for me, that would, would have been a fantastic week. Because this time around, for what it seems, you're going to do actually something for yourself. Instead of, you know, kind of contributing for, for, for other people. And of course, these people are not going to be very happy. But it is what it is. So, um, moving to the first couple of cards. Oh, before we do so, let's uh, run the cards one more time. We do have uh, the um, world card. Afterwards, is going to be the lovers. Furthermore, we do have the page of swords. Then it is uh, the seven of cups. Afterwards, it is the seven of uh, wands. And the last one is going to be the... Um, Knight of Swords. And by the way, I do so double sevens here, uh, which seven is uh, the number of the knowledge. It's kind of like the evaluation of one's a spiritual awakening, if you will. Uh, and it kind of fits with uh, the narrative of the reading itself. So we do have the world and the lover's card here, energies which are feeding the situation. And uh, the world card, it is the situation itself. And uh, it's uh, pretty obvious now the world card is a completion, right? Uh, that one thing that uh, took, I would say it that way, a long time to develop is finally over. And you can finally catch up your breath. You, you, get, you get the job done, all right? That throughout this week, you're just going to get the job done career-wise or relationship-wise. Uh, the world could, could reflect to everything. It's just what the card says is that you're going to have a peak of experience knowing the what thing it is finally over. It's finally done. Positively, that is. And problem is where to next? That That's the real question with the world card because one needs to kind of seek a new perspective in their lives. Now, if the death card is like opening a new chapter, the world is like closing the book and opening a, a new book. Okay. So uh, the problem here, like I said, is going to be where to. And this is where the energies are coming into play. That is to be the lover's card because the lover's card I don't know why it's uh, called Lovers, because the original the original name of the card is the choice. And it's exactly what you got to do here to make a decision where to move as soon as that thing comes to a conclusion, comes to a completion. And uh, uh, with the Lovers card, guys, it's uh, you need to know that there is no right or wrong decision uh, that uh, you can make. Usually the lovers is compared to what you got to do against what you want to do. And either of these choices is going to bring its pros and cons. Either of these choices is going to have its ups and downs. And it does depend, you know, what kind of your personal preference and circumstances that is you're in. Because the example I like to give with the lovers about the choices is that uh, say you are looking for a job and you do so certainly have suddenly have a two propositions. One is something you would love to do, but it is not very well paid. Uh, the other job is something that you would hate to do to work, but it is well paid. 
And so here we stand, you know, the pros and cons of what you have to do and what you got to do, right? So if you um, are, are having family mouths to feed or throats to feed, that is, you got to go for what you got to do. You got to take the one that it's kind of like you would hate doing, but it's... Uh, it will feed your family while if you are single and you have no one else by yourself but yourself to take care of just go ahead and start working what you love to work because if someone works what they love to work they ain't gonna work a single day throughout their lives uh, another thing with the lovers and the world is how these cards can manifest it that suddenly some of the worries that you are facing kind of disappear and it is exactly those worries that are depriving you from a reaching a, a success into say project or into say a closing job or into say finalizing um, uh, divorce if you will or opening your own business and finally those problems are, are over throughout the energies and we do have the situation which is you finally establish that thing you want it problem where to from there okay i mean you're gonna have it you're gonna work it all right you're going to enjoy it but that's ain't the end of the road and you need a new goal new perspective you know a new aim if you will to keep on your life ticking and kind of worth it worth blah, blah, worth its while if you will uh finally with the world card it's important to be said that um once you identify what you want to do with your own life that is throughout this week remember that week is entirely about you not about your boyfriend or a girlfriend or a, a parents or friends it's all about you and what you want to do or what you have to do okay and uh once you identify which is that thing that you are to do what is your next goal or aim uh, you have to face it completely pure. Uh, this is by the card because we do have the woman here naked facing the world, which is with complete sincerity, purity, innocence, and you name it. So that itself speaks that you should not be, how can I say, having certain expectations, being biased about outcomes and all these kind of stuff. Just go there and start chasing your goal your dream your aim your agenda moving next uh, it will be the challenge uh, that you will have to overcome and we have a the page of swords that is a person uh who thinks that you are i would say I don't want to say stupid. Let's say that they will have that opinion that you don't know what you're doing. You think you're doing the best for yourself, but they think they know what is best more than you know, or more, more than you do. No different than in that situation where the teenager wants to kind of like go into school and study something that their parents are finding it completely ridiculous and preposterous so they think that they know better what the kid needs okay and in these cases are kind is kind of understandable but in this particular case that person is probably around your age maybe a little bit younger with the page of swords and uh it's just they think that you are that you're out of your mind and you you don't know what you like you don't know what you do you don't know who you you love as well and that could be a bit dangerous in a sense of that this could be for example a stalker that you kind of tells tells that stalker you don't want I, I don't want anything to do with you and they kind of have the impression that you don't know what you want you are saying that because you know you are not yourself in generally and i'm saying these are going to be uh, these not maybe the case at all but just giving an, an example here with the page of swords now the thing with the page of swords is that they do have that kind of like independable thought and uh, which it's very difficult to tap in it's very difficult to follow with uh, certain arguments uh that is for a reason that they are very good um uh, deceivers maybe i would say it that way what i mean is that they are very skilled into presenting fictions as facts so every time you hear something it will be very good if you compare it against what you know to be true instead of straight away believing it so because these people may try to manipulate you through a presenting you fictions as a fact 
Next one uh, is going to be uh, the gifts and the blessings uh, that you can enjoy throughout the week. That is the gift and the blessing of the Seven of Cups. One of the best cards in this narrative, guys. Because it does look like that you do have the room for trial and error. The, the, especially with these choices that you have to do uh, about, you know, your, your future moves. Or not future moves, excuse me, your future goals. Seven of Cups says like that, that even if you overstep, you know, overstay your welcome, or even if you overstep your capabilities, say, and you go for something that is quite above your pay grade, all right, uh, you are not go, you you are safe from a total failure in the sense of that yes, you are going to experience some sort of a disappointment, um, or uh, you could be. Uh, insulted let's say but that thing is gonna bounce you back on the starting position from which you can try and use something different or the same thing from a different angle so as a gift and blessing the seven of cup here cups here points that your um current achievements of putting into closure uh that's a uh, important chapter not chapter but book of your life it's sound and secure you can't lose it okay you can't lose the starting point for the next uh, uh for the next endeavor of yours and you get to try as much as you like at least for this week uh march 2nd to march 8th 2020 uh next one Taurus, it is uh, how people are going to look at you and how people are going to see you that is the seven of wands um they aren't going to be happy to be honest with uh, with this card because the seven of wands it kind of points to a person who is very resilient to temptation manipulations and as well to uh, being shaped off, if you will, kind of like uh, a force to think and act in certain way. And that is obviously bad if we're talking about career, because your boss with this card is going to look at you as a very insubordinate person, someone that cannot be told exactly how to do something. And if you will, that they have to do something as well. But obviously, it's a very good card for a rivals and people who wishes you the worst, because with uh, having that impression in you, they will think twice before they cross your path because they will are to recognize you as a uh, force to be reckoned with and uh the other way how people are going to look at you with the seven of uh, wands it is being ready in a sense of that having that readiness to take an action whenever opportunity arises here very solid standing firm guarding his ground or your ground guarding your domain not allowing anything to influence in a negative way the world completion of that important toil you have done for a quite a while so you open your business you are not going to allow anybody to mess around with this one you start your new relationship here so opening a new book into your life well uh, you are not going to allow anything to happen to that relationship so people are going to look at you very protective to this achievement of yours and the final card, it is the guidance that uh, Taro is offering. And uh, that is uh, the um, guidance of uh, the Knight of Swords. So actually a couple of guidances here, uh, and they are related to the, um, to the energies, which is the lovers. So as we saw, the lovers is about making a decision where to from now on, that is what the energies are gonna force you into. Uh, but uh, with uh, but they but the energies are not kind of like mm, how can I say it mm, kind of obliging you to take one or the other option. You get to choose which option you want to go by with, and uh, with uh, the Knights of Swords as a guidance. Uh, that card urges you always to consult your logic with your emotions or in other words don't do something you don't want to do okay or don't do something that you're gonna feel uh, how can I say it unsatisfied because because uh, once again you may get for the job that you hate doing but the money could be satisfiable all right so you kind of like scale the pros and cons and you see mm, it's it's we do have an equilibrium here okay just don't go for something that you don't find cost effective in terms of emotions, on in terms of uh, time, in terms of investments, etc., etc., and the more sound uh, guidance that a Knight of Swords is giving you, it's not to make excuses. Just go for it, because 
uh, that may be something you are going to be prone to to have an excuses not to do anything especially if um, you kind of budge under the uh, the pressure of the fallacies page of sorts are gonna give into you I mean it's gonna try to fool your mind with shits and you should not allow this thing to happen so that being said uh, Taurus, this was your weekly general tarot reading, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it and you liked it. Once again, if you are interested in a personal reading with me, checking out the description down below is going to give you the link to my website from which you can see the full list of my services on the very front page, their pricing. And as soon as you make your purchase within the next 24 hours, I'm going to come back with, to you uh, with an uh, email the, explaining you how your reading is going to take place depending on the service you have purchased. And uh, hopefully we're going to see each other around, guys. Until then, bye.